In this video, we're going to look at function transformations, and we're going to look at three of probably many different types of translations or transformations. And the three we're going to look at is reflections, translations, and dilations. And the first one being a reflection means that it's the graph is flipped or rotated about either the x-axis or the y-axis. And to do that, to flip it about the or reflect it about the x-axis, you just stick a negative value in front of your original function, and it's like flipping it about the x-axis. To flip it about the y-axis, you put a negative inside the actual function itself. So you take f of negative x, and then that's like flipping it about the y-axis. The second one is a translation, which uh, you either translate it up and down, which is vertical, or left and right, which is horizontal. And to do that, you just add or subtract a constant from the original x, and then all the values are shifted up or down. And it very intuitive. If it's positive, you shift it up. If it's negative, you shift it down. Horizontal shifts are where you, you take the graph and just move it left or right. And the shift comes in here. So it's f of x plus k. Now, if k is negative, then you move it to the right. right? And if k is positive, it moves to the left. Now, that was always a little counterintuitive to what I thought. If it's negative, aren't negative numbers left? Well, the, that answer is yes, but if this is negative, you shift it to the right. And if it's uh, positive, you shift it to the left. So the next one is what's called a dilation, and that's where you either stretch or shrink the graph. And you can you can stretch or shrink it vertically, or you can stretch or shrink it horizontally. Okay. So if we look at the vertical first, and it's basically the original function times a constant. If it is positive, I mean more than positive, above one k is greater than 1, everything is shifted up and down, okay? So if it crosses the graph, they go through the original points, but everything else is shifted or stretched up. That's a, a vertical shift. If it's between 0 and 1, then it is uh, shrunk. So instead of, instead of being stretched up, it's shrunk. So if we look at the absolute value function, and then take one half of it, it it's shrunk down. So there's the trans, uh, transformation. Horizontal shifts come uh, inside the function, so it's f of kx, and if k is greater than 1, it shrinks, and if it's between 0 and 1, it stretches it. So here, notice that... Um, if this is the original, and then we take f of 2x, everything is shrunk to the middle or towards the y-axis. So that's what I mean by shrink. And a stretch, so f of 1 half x, then everything is stretched out this way. So you kind of get the original shape of the graph, but it's, but it's stretched out. Those are horizontal stretches. So when we look at transformations, it's it's easiest to look at what's called a parent function. And a parent function is really the simplest type of function in a family of functions. Okay, what the heck does that mean? Well, if we look at a line, so um, f of x, f of x equal x. So that's this simple line. Now this simple line can be uh, tr uh, transform transformation into any line out there. You can uh, by the the three that we did. So we can we can take the negative of it, and then it makes it shift this way. We can add one; it shifts it up. We can go x minus one in parentheses plus one, and then it's a horizontal shift. Um, so every line can be generated from this. So that's called a parent function. So this is sort of the simplest function in the family of functions. So the family of functions here is, is lines. 
So here we have a constant function where it's just pick a value and it, that's it. Could be negative, could be positive. Um, oh, here's a quick question. Why can't we have a vertical line? Well, the answer is it's not a function. Remember the pencil test? If you go through, it only intersects in one spot. But if it's a vertical line, it, it'll intersect in an infinite number of spots. So, so it's not a function. So here, uh, the f of x equal x squared, that's a quadratic, or sometimes you just call it a square function. And it, the basic shape is this. A cubic is this. Kind of starts down and then goes up. Square root it only is in the uh, non-negative domain, so it kind of slowly fades up. A reciprocal um, is it has kind of a two-part function, which looks like this. Another parent function is a step function. And there's lots of different types of step function. Well, a more common one is called the greatest integer. So um, it's the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if this is 1 half, then the greatest integer less than or equal to 1 half is 0. So that's how it works. And the graph of that looks like this. There's piecewise functions where you have it's two different functions over two different ranges so it might be this function when we're k or less which is a line here and then it might be uh, this function if we're greater than k and this could be a quadratic and that's called a piecewise function um, absolute value is just this it looks like a v so now let's look at some examples so here example one we have x squared so it's a square function or quadratic. If we take it times 5, that is a, um, a vertical stretch, which is what this one was. So if we take it 5, so it stretches it up so it, it, it ends up being inside this. And here, if we look at this one, um, the, the minus 1 means we shift the graph 1 to the right. This plus one means we shift it one to the up, so that's the center point there. And since it's times one half, that is what's called a shrink dilation, which which uh, sh you know shrinks shrinks it down. So the original, if the one half wasn't there, it would look like this, but it, it shrank it down to closer to the x-axis. So number two. This is called a reciprocal function, and it looks just like this. So this one, it says uh, uh, x plus 5, so that means shift it to the left 5. So then it looks like this. And then if we subtract 1, that's a vertical shift, so we shift it down. So then those become the asymptotes, and then that's the graph. So number 3. Uh, if we have square root function, generally looks like this. If we subtract 3, then it goes down. And now this is the general shape. I don't know exactly where it crosses the x-axis, but I'm just giving you general shapes. And here it says, uh, this one says move it left 2 and then down 3. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, start there, and then it generally goes has you know has the same shape a line that's our parent function one half means it shrinks it down to the x so it has a a, a, a low a littler slope you know the original went like this so it sh that's a shrink and then this one is a um, a right shift and then an up shift so you take that or this point move up and then over and that's what this says up then over and that is this point and then the one half is a shrink so it's a it's a slope actually the same as this where the original would have gone through that point and gone like this now we'll do one more uh, plot 
and I'm gonna call it advanced, but later in this book, we're gonna have to learn how to do this technique, which is called completing the square. But let's, let's graph this. And uh, the parent function is a square. It's the highest number, highest degree, or highest exponent on this. And um, what we want to do is complete the square. So we take the original function, and then we're going to add 0 to it. Add 9, subtract 9. So it doesn't change the original function. But the reason that we do that is now we can group this side together and this side. This side is minus 2, but this side conveniently becomes a square. So if you were to square this out, so x squared plus 3x plus 3x gets 6x plus 9. Okay, But this is easier to graph. So the parent function of x squared, that says go left 3 and down 2. So this point, you go to left 3, down 2, and then re-graph it. Over 3, down, and zoop, zoop. And that's the general shape of the graph. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Uh, subscribe so you don't mix the next, miss the next pre-calc topic. Thanks. Bye.